Deadpool 2 broke the fourth wall and into box office success. But what makes Deadpool 2 so refreshing wasn't more gun swords or crude sex jokes. It was actually the female superhero armpit hair. Just kidding, that was really, really weird. But what does make Deadpool 2 so refreshing is the fact that it is so insane it can actually make politically incorrect jokes and get away with it. I'm Ben Davies, this is Pure Hollywood. Deadpool 2 was made for $110 million, but it made back all of its money already opening weekend, so they're doing just fine. Now, Ryan Reynolds is the lead of the movie, and he's one of the most fun actors to watch in Hollywood on screen. He's absolutely hilarious. He actually was involved with production and with the writing, so he slipped a lot of nuanced stuff in the movie. It was great to watch. As you know from the first movie, Deadpool, this is a meta movie where it breaks the fourth wall and talks directly to you, bringing you into the actual jokes and the story. It's really funny. But this fourth wall break also allows them to do some really unique things with the story and comedy, which makes it really fun. So let's get into it. As a movie, I'm going to give Deadpool 2 a 4 out of 5. Now this movie is the classic, if you like the first one, you like the second one. It's pretty much the same thing rehashed with nothing extraordinarily new about it. I did love Josh Brolin as Cable in this movie, and as you know he played Thanos in the Avengers Infinity War a few weeks ago, <laughs> and he's pretty much in everything Sicario 2. Josh Brolin's just He's in everything. Now also, this movie does have a lot of heart, which allows it to have more levels than just mindless action on screen. There's a lot of inside jokes that are great. It's funny, it's action-packed. There are a few CGI fighting moments that you know are just like so outrageous that you don't really invest yourself in it. And there's one moment that the movie does kind of slow down a bit, which is surprising for a movie that had so many things thrown at you in the first one, but it's still a great fun ride, really fun as a movie. Now as a film, I'll give Deadpool 2 a four out of five. Now what Deadpool 2 did so well is it played to its strengths. One of the things that it has that no other superhero movie can do is talk directly to the audience and get away with it. And because the movie is so insane and doesn't take itself seriously, it's allowed some leeway to actually get some politically incorrect jokes across. Like there are actually jokes about cultural appropriation, inclusivity, feminism, and racism, all this kind of stuff is actually out there. Now obviously not all the jokes were poking fun at people on the left, there was plenty of stuff to go around at people on the right, and that was totally fine, it was refreshing to see a balance for once, and I can enjoy both sides. Now I do think it's hilarious that the only joke that's really being talked about right now in the media is the the fact they mentioned Jared Kushner when they're describing a white guy. And I guarantee you that 95% of people watching Deadpool 2 could not pick Jared Kushner out in a police lineup. All they know is I've heard that on CNN, so he must be a Republican white guy, so I should laugh at that. One of the best examples of them being able to get away with political incorrectness in this movie are two characters on screen. There's a teenage girl and her girlfriend, and the girlfriend is the most stereotypical teenage Asian girl ever. The way she talks, the way she moves, everything was just hilarious. And they were poking with this stereotype. And I'm like, oh my goodness, how are they going to get away with this? How are they not going to get this banned? And then I realized, well, they made her also the first openly gay superhero couple on screen. So it's like, they have to let it fly. It was just hilarious. Now, another way of finding balance of good looking, kind of gross and weird involved too, is Zazie Beetz choice her and her character Domino to have armpit hair on screen. I'm sure all the feminists that were mad at Gail Godot was Wonder Woman not having armpit hair were we're thrilled. Uh, Zazie Beats actually says that she chose this because, you know, a superhero wouldn't have time to shave their armpit hair, just like they don't have time to brush their teeth, shower, or eat, I guess. But, uh, yeah, anyway, that was there, too. Now, My Faith and Values is a 3 out of 5. Please do not take your kids to go see this movie. There's a lot of horrible, offensive stuff in this movie. That's not what I'm going to talk about. However, the values and the heartbeat of this movie is actually pretty good. You see Wade dealing with unbelievable grief, and now he's finding a new purpose and realizes there's more to life than just living for yourself, seeking ecstasy and pleasure. However, the most interesting take on this movie is the theme of accountability. When does that happen? What does that entail? In the movie, there's a young boy who's 14 years old, and he's going to grow up to be a mass murderer of women and children. However, in this situation, he realizes that the boy is only 14 years old, and he is not accountable yet. He's like, this is just a kid. Maybe he can change his ways. Now, this mercy is not granted to other adults who chose to do horrible things and who could have changed their ways in the future, which happens to bring up a very interesting discussion. Now, in the Bible, it's very clear that all children need to be protected at all costs. In fact, Jesus even rebukes his disciples who are getting in the children's way of getting to him. But it is clear that at some point you do become accountable for your actions, even though there is never a specific age listed out, which is great because everyone matures at different paces. But I did like how they addressed this in the movie. The adults that were sex trafficking or murdering or trying to kill others, they were just taken out in hilarious ways constantly. But a boy who's been raised in the culture of violence and hostility and horrors, he still has a chance to repent and be saved. He is not fully accountable for his actions yet. I did kind of like how they found a balance of finding mercy and hope for people and also righteous judgment for those doing horrible things by way of a joke and a gun to the face. I'm Ben Davies, this is Pure Hollywood. 
And another fantastic news, you can now download the Rebel app and take me with you wherever you go to get exclusive content in the entire Rebel lineup.